Hi, this is Harold Long. Welcome to the Hill Tran United Weekly Message and Podcast. I'm glad you're making time for this week's teaching. I will have more to say at the end, but for now, let's dive right in. Well, good morning, everybody. Hats off to Pam wearing many hats this morning. Give it up for her. Yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a real trooper today. I want to welcome everybody to our Advent Message Series, Christmas is for Real People. Hello to the Pod Risters and Zoom people online watching or on Facebook. We're glad you're with us this morning. Um, wish you were with us live, but we understand circumstances don't dictate for it for most people. So we're glad you're here regardless. Uh, today's message is titled, Do You See What I See? And you should recognize this title from the classic Christmas song, Do You Hear What I Hear? And here's the opening verse of that song. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night, with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. And we will be focusing on this verse, do you see what I see, in today's message. And the first question I want to ask you, and you'll see it here on the screen, is what are you planning to do for others this holiday season? And so really, really important question is, what are you doing, what are you planning to do for others this holiday season? And we're at the peak of a worldwide pandemic, amen? But nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God, ever, ever, amen? Nothing is. And so this week we celebrate joy in our Advent season. So let's expand the question a bit, and I'll just add a little bit to it. So here's the next question. What are you planning to do to bring joy to others this holiday season? You know, God created us to enjoy Him. Amen? Amen. Jesus was sent to bring joy to the world by assuring us and teaching us that God created us to enjoy God. Despite all your hurts, habits, and hang-ups, this is the truth. And so it's really, really important to understand that God still desires to live inside you and for you to live inside Him. How cool is that? Amen? I mean, that's really, really cool. And that's, but we lose sight of that big time. Here's the scripture I want to lift up this morning, Romans 14. 17 through 18. God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put into your stomach, for goodness sake. It's what God does with your lives as he sets it right, puts it together, and completes it with joy. Your task is to single-mindedly serve Christ. Do that, and you'll kill two birds with one stone, pleasing the God above you and proving your worth to the people around you really, really important to hear what that's saying, that you were created for God's glory. And so many of us miss that. I mean, we get stuck sometimes because of our shortcomings, because of our hurts, habits, and hangups. We fail to live into that, and we lose sight of that God created us for a joyful relationship with Him and with each other and with the kingdom. And our job as kingdom people is to live out that joy, but also bring joy to the world, despite our circumstances. See, happiness is dictated by circumstances. If it's a good day, I'm happy. If it's not, and that can waver in one, you know, 24-hour period many times. But joy is something that's there permanent that comes from this rich, you know, lifestyle, living the kingdom life, having in your life. For example, we have a daughter, Danielle, who's in Houston, who's in the hospital right now in the COVID unit. Um, she's been there for three days. She went in there a few nights ago with, what was it, appendicitis at 1.30 in the morning. They did a CT scan only to find, you know, not only did she have appendicitis, but she also has a six centimeter cyst that's covering part of her ovaries. Um, And so this was going on. But as they did the CT scans and did more tests, they're pretty convinced that she has COVID-19. And and that's what's attacking her her organs at this time. So they moved her to the CT or to the COVID ward. And unfortunately, the hospital is overflowing. So they originally she was in the surgical ward. Uh, it was the only place I could find a spot for. So you didn't have all the, you know, the, the necessities that you would normally have, the amenities that you would normally have in a regular hospital room. But eventually they got her moved around. But she's in the COVID ward and she's waiting for the, the three to five day test to come back uh, to find out, to confirm if she really has COVID-19. The rapid test said negative uh, a few days before she was exposed by a teacher's aide at school. Um, but we sit there with that. We're waiting, you know, to find out. But the surgeon's pretty, 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 pretty sure that she has COVID-19. Those circumstances don't make anybody happy. There's nobody happy in our family about those circumstances. And of course, we're praying for her and I've been able to FaceTime with her a few times uh, as she's tried to work through this difficult circumstances. 
But that doesn't take away the joy that I have in my heart for the Christmas season or for the kingdom. Amen? Are you listening to what I'm saying? I mean, it's really, really important to know the difference between what is joy and what is happiness. Happiness is totally predicated on what circumstances are going on. Again, again, it can change quickly and many times in a 24-hour period. But joy is just something that's with you. And I hope you get the difference. And it's really what you were created for is to have this joy in God, despite the darkness that's going on around us with the COVID and all the nonsense and unemployment and restaurants not being able to open and all the stuff that's challenging lots of people. Uh, despite all that, I can still have joy. I can still live into the season and, and, and have the spirit of Christmas with me. So the next slide I want to lift up is Jesus came to serve. And so the question is, will you? See, that's, that's the big, big question that will come out of what we're going to talk about today. You know, what are you planning to do for others this holiday season is important. And the question is not what you can do, but what you can do for others. And it's important to remember that we enlarge our spiritual life. This is really, really important. We're going to learn something here from Winnie the prophet, Winnie the Pooh, right? And, uh, but it's really, really important that we enlarge our spiritual life by loving and serving other people. So if, you're, if your life is lacking spiritually, it's not going to be because you have more intelligence or you memorize more scripture. Those things are important. But it's going to come by you actually living out the kingdom life, by loving people and serving people. That's how we grow spiritually. We don't grow because we have more information. The information doesn't change. It's how we live into the information. Uh, you don't have to be a, a, a biblical scholar to live out the kingdom life at all. It's, it's really just about loving and serving people, but you have to have a heart transplant for that to happen. Hopefully yours has been transplanted, but if it has, then be joyous and have a joyous spirit despite the challenges that we face, despite many of you that have to watch online because you're in that high-risk category, which I totally respect and observe uh, in a big, big way uh, for you. Uh, but check out what the prophet Winnie the Pooh said. Winnie the Pooh said that the things that make me different are the things that make me. So I want you to think about that. That's, that's a deep saying. The things that make me different are the things that make me. So as a kingdom person, the things that make you Christ-like is Christ himself being in you and you in Christ. Amen? Really important that you get that. And so that you are different than the average Joe and Charlie on the streets if you're living the kingdom life. What is different about you is that you can find joy in a time like this. Not necessarily you're happy or content or even have acceptance of all the things going on around you, but you can still have joy. And that's baffling to a lot of people who are living by worldly things, living by worldly circumstances, individualism, you know, consumerism. They're caught up in the consumerism of Christmas. Really, really hard sometimes to have any kind of happiness going through this period. So there's a lot of people that are suffering right now. But even, uh, despite all that, you can still live the kingdom life and have joy. We were all created for God's glory, and we're presented with many different gifts, which shapes us in many different ways. It makes us creative in our own ways. So all of you have certain gifts and talents and tr that I'll never have. I mean, by far, never have some of the gifts that you guys have. And so I hope you discover what those gifts are and live into them. But I'm going to share some ideas with you now on ways that you can spread joy during this COVID Christmas that we're experiencing. These ideas I gathered from another number of resources, some from the United Kingdom, etc. I'll put these in the show notes. So when this message is uploaded on our website on Monday, where the bulletin and the lesson plan and everything you ever want about the service are there every week. But in the show notes, I always put any links to any references uh, or any third-party sources that we use to build the message. It's all there so you can fully go get engaged the message. But here's some of the things I want to lift up today. These are some ways that you can live out the kingdom life and bring joy to the world. One is leave flowers for, on people's doors. Just send some flowers to somebody unexpectedly. You don't even have to put your name on it. Just put anonymous. Bless somebody with something like that. Simple way that you can do that in this COVID Christmas. Rake some leaves or mow the lawn for your neighbor. You know, look at Mark. Some of you guys are like perturbed by that question. That's a great idea. You know, some of you guys that don't have your shoulder in a cast like most of the day. But think about it. I mean, there's a lot of people that just can't get out and do those things. Make some masks. You know, I know the, the, the group that meets here on Tuesdays, uh, blessed, made a lot of masks and blessed a lot of people with those. But you can do those in the comfort of your own home and make some pretty cool and be and creative masks to send to some people in your family. Uh, run errands for the most vulnerable. I mean, some people are just really, really high risk and they haven't been out hardly anything. They go to the drugstore, they go to the grocery store and that's it. But you could even bless them by running some of those errands for them. You know, so just ask, hey, can I go do this for you or do that for you? Lots of ways you can be creative in this time. Uh, pay it forward by paying for someone else's coffee or meal 
uh, groceries. You know, we've seen this, if you watch the news at all this week, there was a little piece on Starbucks where, I, I don't forget how many people, but it was a lot of people. It was less than 100, but it was close to 100 people in a row paid for the person behind them's coffee, you know, and just creating a joy and a spirit of Christmas. I know if I did that, I would probably get stuck with a van full of people and it'd be about $70, but that's fine, you know, but, but that's a creative way you can do that. Um, soldiers angels, as you see on there, is a, is a virtual way to serve. So some of you that are, you know, stricken to be at home and you can't go anywhere, you can virtually serve in a lot of ways. Soldier angels is one of those, and I'll have the links in the show notes for that. But you can go on and bless soldiers that are, you know, in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever they're at around the country. You can bless them in a lot of ways. And they got a lot of creative little virtual ministries you can do to bless them and their families while they're separated, especially during this time of year. And it's for free and for fun. It's a cool way to do it. So I encourage you to do that. Write a handwritten letter. I mean, nothing spells love and, and intentionality more than getting something that's handwritten. When's the last time you just sit down and wrote a letter? I mean, other than type it on a word processor, send an email or all that good stuff. But I mean, actually just get out, you know, a yellow, yellow notepad and write a letter. It doesn't have to be long, but just personalize it and then put it in the envelope. And back in the old days, we'd lick a stamp, but you just pull a sticker off and stick it on there. But do that and try that out. I mean, I've gotten a lot of cards that are written out. People really went above and beyond to put notes or stuff in the cards. And that's really cool. That's really, really special. Something that's easy. In a few bucks, you can bless somebody's life with a handwritten letter. Create a jigsaw puzzle. There's tons of these puzzle templates, believe it or not, online. And you could take a photograph of your family or a really cool photograph or a photograph of your dog, and you can turn it into a puzzle and put it in a box and go bless somebody with it. You know, it's really, really cool. So Google that, and you'll find lots of ways. Get the kids involved. Lots of ways to get creative with kids. Some of you are baking more than you ever have before. I've heard many of you say, I think I've gained 10 pounds because all we do is bake, bake, bake in the kitchen. Uh, we had that problem in my house, and, uh, and it's been, but I've, I've loved it, but it's uh, not good for me, I can promise you. But it's, uh, but it's a fun way to get the kids involved, even if they're older. We had some of the older kids come by and uh, do some of that with Susie and the gang, so it was fun. Uh, send a picture of homemade art or something that you're doing. Uh, one of our daughters is pretty gifted with painting, and she painted a picture of a dog, worked on it all week and some other paintings, and you know, we'll frame that, hang it in the house, and we'll have it forever. That's a great way you can do things and bless people. Um, Cardly is just one. I mean, you got Shutterfly, but Cardly is another one, cardly.com, where you can go in and get really creative and port some pictures, make some cool cards, and bless some, pitch, pe um, bless some people in your family uh, that way. Sh shout out, shout a meal. I don't know what that means. That should say share a meal, uh, but share a meal. I mean, you can really bless some people if you're cooking up some really good stuff, homemade rolls, cinnamon rolls or whatever, or some good spaghetti or chili or beef and noodles this time of year. And just all of a sudden you knock on somebody's door and you leave and they open the door and boom, there's some, uh, some killer meal that you made for them and it blesses them. We had a part of our uh, Advent study. We have a, a lady from Hillsboro, used to be a member of Hillsboro, lives in Louisiana. And I t teased her a few days ago. I said, man, set up some of that good Louisiana cooking, just joking. And then the, a couple days ago, or yesterday, I think it was, we get this big uh, styrofoam cooler with dry ice in it full of Louisiana specials. So she blessed us with that. I mean, that's a, that's a huge blessing in a, in a big, big way. Uh, be a good listener. As you, as you go through this time of year, I mean, somebody that's struggling with COVID and uh, somebody who's lost somebody, somebody who's having a real blue Christmas, you don't have to have all the answers when you call those people. You don't have to have any answers at all. You can just call them and say, I'm just checking in on you. I want to tell you I love you, telling you I miss you, and just listen to whatever they're going to share with you. That's it. I mean, just learn how to listen. You don't have to have all this knowledge and all, all these references to things that are going to try to change their, where they're at on this circle of grief. They are where they're at. But that's a way you can do that. And again, volunteer virtually. And so um, you'll see some of those links that I'll put in the mail or in the, in the show notes for ways to do that. Get back just in any way you can. Think about ways you can spread joy and get back into the kingdom. Help the disabled. Help the homeless. Um, there's a homeless couple that lives across the street from uh, Hillsboro United Methodist and, and a younger couple. They're, I don't even think they're in their 20s. If they are, they're early 20s. But they've been blessed by our congregational care team in a big, big way uh, throughout this, this challenge that they have being where they're at in life. 
Um, and so they got a they got blessed by a pretty good Christmas. They will be because uh, in the tree in the tree there in the sanctuary is a lot of gifts for those two people um, and blessing them this time of the year. So that's just those are just examples how you can do that. And lastly, be nice to yourself. This is a great time to do something for for yourself. Um, read a good book, take a hot bath, do, or go for a drive, or go hang out in the woods, or whatever it is you can do for yourself in this time of isolation, and bless yourself uh, in a big, big way. Just you know, we can get really all about you know our family and just and really miss out on doing something fun for ourselves. So I encourage you to do that. Spread some joy for yourself this season. Uh, when we uh, just go on to our next slide here. Well, I, just, I want you to think about, even in this time of trial, I want to share the scripture with you. It's one you probably know, but this is James 1-2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face many kinds of trials. There should be another sc- screen. Oh, you've got to click next to it, inside the screen itself. But anyway, you count it all joy uh, as you go through your trials. And that's what that says to us, is that you, I want you to count it all joy um, even, in, even though it's dark outside, we can still find joy in it. And our scriptures time and time and time again lift that up for each and every one of us. Uh, when we take time to look for ways to serve like Jesus, even during a pandemic, you can discover plenty of opportunities. So you can go on to that next slide, Peggy. And so there it is. Um, again, you can discover countless ways. And it's not about what you can do. The question is, what will you do? to get out of yourself this Christmas season and bless others with joys. All right? And so let's go on to the next slide. And so that's really where we want to get to. Proverbs 10, 28 says this. And that's our next slide, Peggy. The, the prospect is joy, but the wicked hopes come to nothing. So when you're living a joyful life, when you're living a kingdom life, you find creative ways to do things. And it's really, really important. But the wicked's hopes come to nothing. So people that are living by consumerism and worldly things aren't really happy during this time. You'll, feel, you'll see a lot of those complainers. They're complaining about the election. They're complaining about politics. Uh, the world's going to go, it's going to go down in flames because this person is not the president or this person is not this or this person is that or the, this is going on or this, you know, all over the place. I mean, if you are on social media or watch the news or anything, you see all this stuff going on. You can see people who are just totally brokenhearted, discouraged and given up on life because the world isn't the way they think it should be. But if you got joy in your life, man, if you got the kingdom in your life, you, you live through all that stuff. I've been through a lot of presidents, a lot of mayors, and a lot of different people. My life hasn't really changed that much, to be honest with you, other than I've just grown deeper in my faith during the course of all these years. But my life's not really been uh, too compromised because this person or that person in the world did this or did that. But what happens when it comes to the kingdom is a whole different story. And the kingdom is not part of the world system. Really, really important to know that. Not, not even anywhere close. As Jesus would say, you can go out, you got to be in the world, but not of it. And a lot of people that are of it are some unhappy campers this holiday season. So I want to uh, ask another question of you. So this is going to be some fun to think about. But what is the worst gift you ever got on Christmas? And I'm not talking about you know, a white elephant gift or a gag gift where people are silly. I'm talking about a sincere gift, but in the end, it was just awful. Do you have any of those? I mean, some of you got family in the room, so you're probably not going to confess. But but, uh, but I'm going to share a few examples, just a couple, and then one of my own that I think you'll get a kick out of. But this one, this first one I'm going to share, the title of this little story is called The Obvious Regift. So maybe you've been guilty of regifting something you have and passing it off to somebody else. This is Andrew. Andrew's 32. Uh, was initially delighted to get this elegant, and I mean elegant, Italian dress shirt from his dad. His dad gave it to him. Then he saw that it had the initials monogrammed on his cuff that were his dad's initials, not his own. And he hadn't even unfolded it, so he probably didn't even know that his initials were on that shirt to start with. But he just re-gifted it and gave it to his son. Um, that was a that was, you know, in, in, in Andrew's words, thoughtless. <laughs> so that wasn't, that wasn't a good gift. Here's Lori. Lori's 40. She has received a gorgeous, expensive nightgown from her mother for the last three Christmases. She hasn't been able to wear them because the nightgowns don't fit. They're just opportunities for her mother to deliver a message, which is it's always, and, and, it's, and it's always a size two or three, two sizes too small. 
She says, I'm probably 15 or 20 pounds overweight, but she does this to me every, every year. And then she'll give me the gift, and then she'll immediately take it back and say, and then she'll just almost rip it out of her hands and say, oh, that won't fit you, will it? You know, honey, you will never find a husband if you don't lose weight. That's a pretty awful gift. That's, you know, come on. That's from her mom. And this, uh, this one's called the acne kit. My best friend gave me an acne solution kit. She was trying to be helpful and thoughtful, and she and I talked about my skin problems. But still, who wants to get an acne kit for Christmas, amen? At least she gave it to me in prior to it instead of having me unwrap it in front of everybody. And this last one I'll share with you is from myself. Years ago, the kids gave me a frog for Christmas. And it was a, it was a stuffed frog. It was in a sitting position with a pole and it had a, and a straw hat on. And, uh, you know, it was uh, in a fishing pole and it was just a frog fishing. And I got it, I opened it, and I put it on the shelf in the closet and never, never bothered to remove it all year. It stayed on the shelf. So at Christmas time, the next year, they got it back out, rewrapped it, and gave it back to me again. <laughs> so they sent a, a, you know, a message there. You know? And so I finally got the frog out and put it on. But, but when you think about our scriptures this morning and what Pam lifted up in Matthew chapter 2, it reflects that bringing gifts... Uh, was particularly important in the ancient Near East, for sure, back in the day when the Magi were around, especially when you were approaching a superior, somebody of authority, somebody who was of recognition, a VIP in Eastern Asia. You know, it was important to bring gifts. So the gifts that they brought was frankincense. And, and in frankincense, if you actually saw it, it's, it's glittery. It's got an odorous gum smell to it, and it's obtained by making incisions in, several, in the bark of several trees. That's how they extract frankincense. Myrrh exudes from a tree found in Arabia and from other places, and it's a much valued spice and, and, and perfume. Um, Psalm 45, verse 8, and songs, Song of Psalms, chapter 3, verse 6, uh, lift that up, how, that, how that's used. And then it's also used in embalming people. So back in the day, they embalmed people with it. John, chapter 19, verse 39, refers to that happening with this thing called the spice called myrrh. Uh, commentators, ancient scholars, Origen, one of my favorite, and Contra Selsum, and a modern day scholar named Hendrickson have found symbolic values in these gifts. So as you look at these gifts, so this is how they break it down. The gold suggests royalty, incense, divinity, and myrrh, the passion and burial. So in a sense, these three gifts represent the Christmas story, if you think about it. And you may have never even thought about it on that perspective. God's gift of his only son, Jesus, mattered to the whole world. Amen? And the gift that we give back to God matters just as much. And it's easy to miss that in the Christmas time. Um, as you look at this story of the Magi and how they were led to by the stars and, and, and all the alignments that brought them to where they were supposed to go, the interpretation may be exaggerated or it may be too much insight for the Magi themselves you know, that they really knew what was going on or, had, or knew the spiritual message going on. They just knew that they were being led. But one thing's for sure, these three gifts were, only, they were not only expensive and they were not uncommon presents, but most likely it helped them finance their trip to and from too. They probably sold off some of these things to make that trip back in the day. So the question is, what do we learn from the Magi? That's the question we got to ask yourself. What, what do we learn from this scripture that we read this morning? And we learn from the Magi is that they were looking and since they were looking, they were able to see God's GPS for the way to Jesus. Are you listening? And that's really the question that we want to think about today. Because if you're looking, even in the dark times that we're in, you can still see the light. You can still see Jesus. Regardless of how dark it may look outside because of the pandemic or other trials and low spots that may be going on in your life, we can always see light if we look. We can still see the good in others if we look. We can always find ways to bless others like Jesus if we look. And we don't have to do it alone. We have Jesus every step of the way. Amen? That's really, really important. You know, a great example of that is over at the... And, and you got that going on here, too. But I'll just lift up this one. This, there's a huge ministry at Hillsboro called Christmas Baskets. And in that Christmas Basket ministry, it blesses well over 100 kids. They each get presents and all that. But they also get a huge basket of food that takes a lot of... Over 3,000 canned goods to fill all these baskets. Well, in years past, they, they, they rely on the Boy Scouts tremendously to help fund that, you know, with their, their canned good campaign. Well, they couldn't do that because of COVID-19. 
They had a grocery store who changed ownership, and this grocery store used to be very generous. Not anymore. And so they had one setback after another setback. But because of the generosity, the creativity, and, 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 and of all the people there, including that they're not meeting live in person at that particular church, so you didn't have any online worship going on, or in, in-person pers- uh, church going on. Despite all that, they were able to fulfill the needs that they met and have more than they had in, in previous years and some years. I mean, God blessed, and they found a way, and they pushed forward, and they were able to see God working even when it seemed like it wasn't possible. And that's the beautiful thing about kingdom life and the joy in this time of year. Jesus promises if we stay focused on the kingdom, he will always be there with us, even amid a pandemic, amen? Even that. So, and that's really lifted up in, our, in a gospel in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I am always, I am with you always to the end of the age. It's really, really important to hang on to that. And I'm, behold, I am always with you till the end of the age. So we always have Christ with us. We always have the Holy Spirit with us, despite what's going on. During this hectic, this hectic season that we're in, how are you worshiping God in your own life? What are you doing when nobody else is around? I mean, how are you really glorifying God and worshiping God in your own way? Really, really important to lean into that. And how are you sharing this joy with other people? Those are the questions I want to leave you with. Those are the things I want to challenge you with. Friends, it's a great week to bring joy to the world in all things we do. And I hope you listen to the ways of the Magi, the, Magi, the commands of Jesus, and choose wisely this week to live out the kingdom life in all forms. You're not alone. Amen? Jesus is with you all the way. You can't fail unless you do nothing. Then if you, everyone loses if you do nothing. So, I mean, everybody loses. And so God created us for this opportunity. So this is what it's about. Whether it's dark or it's light outside, we're called to be a light. We're called to bring joy to the world. So I hope you do that this Christmas season. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your time today. We thank you for this kingdom community. We thank you that you know, we have this technology where our friends that can't be with us today because of this virus can be with us online and share with us. Even though we don't have that kinetic energy of being together, we still can hear, we still can see, we can still be together in spirit. And so, Lord, we thank you for that technology and the ability to be able to do that. Lord, we just pray that we can not get caught up in our circumstances thinking that we're going to find joy there. But we know that we only find joy by leaning into your word for our life, but put it on the full armor that you've given us through scripture and through spiritual tools, get. And so help us live into that today. Help us have that joy, but more importantly, help us to go out and bring joy to the world, Lord. That's what you're calling each and every one of us as kingdom people to do. So we ask for the power, the honesty, the open-mindedness and willingness it takes to do that. And we pray for that boldly in this COVID Christmas season. It's in your son's name we pray that, these things. And all God's people said, amen. Hi again, this is Harold. Thanks for listening to our weekly message and podcast. I hope that we have shared something helpful to you wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Just so you know a little bit more about us, we are Hill Tran United. Hill Tran United is an alliance between Hillsboro United Methodist Church and Transformation United Methodist Church. We are kingdom churches and kingdom communities for people who aren't into church. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. at Hillsboro United Methodist Church and 11 a.m. at Transformation United Methodist Church. Both churches are located in the northeastern tip of the beautiful Ozark Mountains, located in Jefferson County, Missouri. We also meet during the week in smaller groups that we call life groups and home churches, and that's how we make it relational. We hear regularly from people from all over who are engaging in personal and group studies based on our teaching, and we would love to know if that is happening where you are at. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube, where you can download our app from your favorite app store. Just search for the app titled Our Church by Church Dev and enter in Hilltran United, and you can access all of our available audio, video teachings, plus through the app you can, and, or our website, you can download our PowerPoint slides, bulletin, sermon notes, and discussion questions. It's all there for you. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how you can support Hillsboro United Methodist Church or Transformation United Methodist Church financially, 
please go to www.hilltran.org for more information and to give. We appreciate anything you can do to help. Hey, thanks for being a member of this extended church family. I'm glad we are in this together as kingdom people commencing shoulder to shoulder to help people rediscover life and experience the kingdom of God.